Hello and welcome to Switzer Investing Insights brought to you by NAB Trade. And today we're looking at week two of reporting season, CBA, Transurban, Telstra and AMP. Paul, CBA. Yeah, let's start with uh, the biggest bank and the biggest company still in Australia, Commonwealth Bank, um, NPAT down 11.3% to $7.3 billion. That was a little bit below market uh, consensus and one of the reasons the stock came off afterwards. I think the point to note there, Peter, a materially weaker second half. So the second half only $2.9 billion versus $4.4 billion in the first half. That's Let's a big blame difference. coronavirus on that Yeah, one. look, it's not only coronavirus. Obviously, the provision of $1.5 billion for COVID-19, some customer remediation costs. But really, they haven't done a lot on expenses. Mm. And over the course of the year, they had a little growth in income, but expenses still went up faster. And uh, I still think there's work for the bank to do more on the expense side. Look, the highlights, um, obviously good volume growth. That's been one of the standouts for Commonwealth Bank. Home loans up uh, 1.3 times faster than the system. $25 billion or more, more increase in customer deposits. So that a huge yeah. boom in customer deposits. Big four banks are popular during recessions, aren't they? They sure are. The final dividend, 98 cents fully frank. That was better than expected. Uh, this is under the new APRA guidelines. We tipped 80 cents, mm. um, but still down from $2.31. Um, and I suppose the other thing that came out of the result is that they're in a super strong capital uh, position, a set one ratio of 11.6%. That'll increase further to 12.2% following some already announced divestment. So they're going to have something like around about $7.5 billion worth of, of surplus capital. That's above the sort of the unquestionably strong APRA benchmark. Mm. So uh, no problem on capital. And that was really driven home in terms of their dividend, Peter. Not, they couldn't pay any more than 98 cents. That was 49.95% of what they could pay out. Yeah. Because Ap APRA has put, put a cap on APRA has put a cap on for this year, but APRA's also been saying, if you're thinking about paying a dividend, have a look at things like your dividend reinvestment plan, look at perhaps the discounts that you might give to, to shareholders encourage people, to yeah. encourage them to take it up so that, so that your, your banks don't have to pay out the cash. Commonwealth Bank said, no discount. So mm. uh, look, super strong capital position, but CBA is trading at a huge premium to its, uh, to its competitors. And I think that's really why it came down after the result, Peter, because it, look, it was a good report, but mm. when you're at such a premium, you know, you've got to do a little bit more, and I don't think we really saw it on the sort of cost side. Buy, sell, or hold. Paul. Look, a hold, core portfolio stock, you know, markets sell off, it'll be do the best of the banks. Mm. I like CBA in conjunction with one of the other majors. Okay, let's go and look at Transurban now. Yeah, this company's also been challenged because of COVID-19 and the, and the changes, people are working from home. So uh, traffic down 8.6% over the course of the year and revenue down 3.4%. You can see that's mainly, uh, but not exclusively in Melbourne where the lockdowns have been worse. Yeah. Uh, EBITDA down 6.4% and a loss Saturday loss for Transurban, which is pretty, which you, just, you don't really, people don't really worry about that too much. On the project side, I think some of the gloss have come off here in terms of their ability to execute. The Westgate Tunnel's obviously having some issues, been delayed by a year. <coughs> they say the other major projects are broadly on track, but the North Connex in Sydney, which is the new tunnel, still hasn't opened. That's now over a year and a half late. Mm. So uh, they're, they're not doing as well in terms of execution. Uh, distribution, the final distribution of 16 cents, uh, 47 cents for the full year versus 59 cents. No forecast for next year, but said that it would be in line with uh, free cash flow. Interesting that uh, Sydney's uh, revenue is up 2.8%. Uh, Going to show that people working from home still go to the golf club during the working well, day. Well, they have some, you know, the, the reason why tra <laughs> Transurban has done well is not only has traffic been going up, but revenue goes up even faster because of the concessions they have, which are more than inflation, despite what the government yeah. say. So look, but you know, what, what I think it, uh, the result does point to is, is maybe put the lockdowns away, is, is maybe the, the, the days of toll roads have seen some of their, their peak. Yeah. So mm. I'm not a seller on Transurban, Peter, but uh, yeah, I think some of the gloss has come off Transurban. Okay, let's go to uh, Telstra now. Look, a very eagerly awaited report, mm. uh, and it basically delivered on guidance. So uh, income down 5.9% uh, to $26.2 billion. If you go back, Telstra is income is decreasing each year. So just one of the stories to be wary about Telstra. Mm. Uh, EBITDA down 9.7% to $7.4 billion. They were in guidance, but the lower end. Um, the, one of the positives, you can take a positive out of, it, out of the Telstra report, was that they actually grew EBITDA for the first time in, uh, in about five years. Yeah. That ex that's, that's including the NBN headbin as people move off, you know, fixed hand lines and fixed broadband. Yeah. 
Uh, but it all came in the first half, and the second half was actually a decline again in the second half. Mm. The COVID-19 impact, Telstra's done a lot to help its customers. It's done a lot with the staff. Everyone's working from home. Uh, and also then it's brought back some of the call centre business from the Philippines back to Australia. They said that cost them about $200 million in the second half yeah. and would cost again in the first half of <coughs> FY21. Uh, mobile revenue, which is, you know, we all think that people are using, the, you know, this is communications more, that's still under pressure, down 4.4% and lower average revenue per user. So the important thing with the Telstra result was the dividend, they did maintain it at 16 cents, um, but it is pressured, and uh, some of the analysts after the result uh, revised their forecast. I think they'll probably still be able to do 16 cents, Peter, next year, mm. but certainly market expectations are down, and it's going to get harder. And this is why the um, number Telstra shares fell afterwards, is, the, is that the guidance for next year's uh, EBITDA of 65 to $7 billion, that was below expectations. That's partly due to COVID-19, but also because they really ha aren't able to increase revenue on the mobiles. Yep. And uh, it's still a, ch a challenge company, Peter. Is this company a buy around $3 per? I think around $3. It was three forty dollars before the mm. result. I think there's some opportunities there because, uh, as I said, I, th I think they probably will be able to do the dividend. If not, you know, maybe at even a 14 cents, the yield's attractive. So I think in lower end, Telstra mm. is attractive, but I don't think you're going to see an enormous amount of re-rating or capital yeah. gains. So yeah. uh, Telstra's a buy in weakness, but, you know, I think the analysts about everyone expecting 5G was going to be the panacea. It still might, but they're challenged to actually yeah. grow earnings and revenue. And they, they'll need a nice strong year to bring business demand back for this company. Let's go to the next one, Paul. Look, another challenged company was AMP. Hey. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, look, underlying profit here was down 42%. I don't think there was any surprise about that. What was perhaps unexpected was the capital return of $544 million. That's a special dividend of 10 cents, fully franked, and a 200 million on market buyback. No ordinary dividend, but we're going to get a special. So uh, mm. AMP was basically saying we've sold our life insurance business, we've got lots of capital. Mm. Uh, we can also afford to actually take out the minority stake in AMP capital, uh, which is probably a positive for shareholders. So it'll now own 100%. I mean, AMP is the best like, part of the business. Really, it's the best it? part of the business. Look, it's still, I won't say it's a basket case, Peter, but uh, look, it, it, they've still got their challenges mm. and uh, I don't yet think management has proved they're really on top of it. It is worth more on a sum of the parts business. Yeah, you break so them if up, you break them it up, sold them off, sold yeah. the bank off, sold AMP capital, capital, you'd mm -hmm. get more than the current share price. But yep. uh, look, uh, you know, I still got its issues, and I don't yeah. think there was anything in that report that told Paul, me the issues are yet solved. Paul, I think these guys are going to try and get their share price up, but I just think there are better companies out there to put your money into. There's too many risks, I think, with AMP. Yeah, I, I think if you're looking for growth, it's not AMP. You want to be patient. Look, eventually think that they will be broken up, which mm. I think is probably still what's going to happen. Okay, hang on. You put mm. whether that takes twelve months or two years or three years, I don't know. But mm. uh, I just think if you're looking for capital growth, there are better companies than AMP up there. Exactly. That's what's through investing insights brought to you by Nabtrade. Thanks for joining us.